What's up, y'all? It's Bree the Struggle Bug coming to you from the early hours of the Teal Mask. Like many players, I hope to start my DLC journey with the adorable new Grass Ghost Pokemon, Poltergeist. I was thrilled to realize that not only was this possible, but I could also find a shiny one with relative ease. Quick disclaimer, this video was made the day the Teal Mask was released, so there may be better Poltergeist locations and methods that the community finds in the near future. This tutorial is meant for anyone who wants to prioritize adding shiny Poltergeist to their DLC team quickly and without going ahead too far in the story. To find Poltergeist, we're going to start right from the community center in Masui Town. You'll have free reign with your ride legendary after you spend your first night here and receive your field trip assignment. Looking at the map, we're going to a location by Revelers Road. If you're good at pinning down map locations from looking at someone else's screen, now's your chance to screenshot. Hop on your ride Pokemon and head to the left across the bridge. You'll see the Revelers Road area sign and go through this first red archway. You should stay on the path, going past a trainer and keeping right at this little fork. Keep going up until you see the second red archway. You don't want to go past the archway, just be in the area in front of it. Set up a picnic and make your typical ghost shiny sandwich. Three helpings of red onion, one pickle, one cucumber, and two herba mystica. You want to get level 3 sparkling, tidal, and encounter power. Once your sandwich is made, you'll find poltergeists hanging out around the bamboo. You may find some on the road and down the grassy hill a bit, just don't stray too far in any direction from the bamboo. You'll get into the rhythm of their general radius after a few minutes. And, of course, use your lead Pokémon to KO every Poltergeist you see until you find the shiny. This is the advantage of the isolated encounter method. I have confirmed that Poltergeist outbreaks exist, but Poltergeist is small, floats around quickly, and has a shiny form that can be very difficult to tell from a non-shiny form. The only difference is that the black on the outside of Poltergeist's tea caddy becomes a very dark green. With an isolated encounter, we won't ever run out of Poltergeist or have to strain our eyes trying to tell what's what. During my first sandwich, I got the hang of things pretty quickly, but I was rudely interrupted here by a Fomantis, then even more rudely interrupted by a random shiny furret. Oh my gosh. Is that a shiny ferret standing right there? I was trying to get Poltergeist. Come on now. Don't you got an escalator to run up? About 45 minutes into shiny hunting, or halfway through my second sandwich, I noticed that my iron hands stopped throwing hands. Ooh, I think we found it. I think we've got it. That is not very noticeable at all. But I'm pretty confident that this is it. I don't know why I'm even bringing out my Breloom. Nothing is going to work. But let's make sure to save. And we hope that this is it. There it is. Shiny Poltergeist. I think I'm calling friend ball in this one. Let's see if it agrees. It does. All right. Awesome. I'm so excited. First day, new Pokemon. All right. Unsurprisingly counterfeit. Nature is hardy. Ooh, I did spot the memento under the move set. Be very careful if you're approaching a shiny poltergeist. Make sure you save. Many a shiny Tatsugiri hunters have been through this pain. Just for direct comparison, here's the non-shiny Poltergeist, and here's the shiny. Pretty cute. I hope this video helps someone out there get their DLC and spooky season off to the right start. Have fun, consider dropping a sub if you learned something new, and thanks for watching.